I left a 10 out of 10 vulnerability on my Next.js server and hackers tried to get in. They had remote code execution and they can do anything they want. They tried to get my ENV variables, AWS keys, Git credentials, SSH keys. They even tried installing uh, Monero miners on my server. And I'm going to show you in this video the logs, what happened and how to actually protect yourself because out of this exchange, they absolutely got nothing. The exploit that they use was this recent Next.js exploit that happened on December 3rd and this is a 10 out of 10 exploit which means it's easy to reproduce this is just executing some uh, this is abusing the server actions that Next.js has and they can execute any code on your app so let's get into the logs I'm going to show you what they try to do exactly and how to protect yourself from this so the first command that I'm going to execute is the XM rig one and as you can see they try to install XM rig which is a Monero miner on my server they have the tar and the chmod commands here and the tar command essentially unzips something that you downloaded and the chmod command gives access to a binary so they want to unzip the xm rig miner the monero miner and then give it chmod access to actually run it and have it mine while well, i don't know this is one problem but uh, the bigger problem here is the thing that they try to do next and from this command you can see that they tried to cat the .env file cat is a command that outputs something from a file so for example if your .env file has some credentials inside the secrets open ai secrets and tropic or whatever you're using maybe stripe even they would see this with cat they would output it to the terminal now they didn't only try to cat the env file they tried to cat the env local the env production the env development the ssh directory which contains keys and the authorized keys to the server and also the aws credentials now imagine if someone stole your env file where you had something some very secret keys and then they also stole anything from aws that you have so they buy five gpus that are on your card and they mine monero with it this is the second thing that they try to do they also try to use this next.js redirect error that, that happens and as you can see they listed out the entire file system now what they did do here is they listed the files that i have in my server and as you can see here this shows you the read write permissions this shows you the gid and uid this is the user id and group id and this sh shows you the files and everything else now having uid as root and G gid as root is not a good practice but i'm going to show you later on how i protected myself and as you can, as you can see he, see here even if they have the root uid and gid they still can't do anything and i'm going to show you this here they tried to add this pink command which is a out of bond i think uh, execution which means they can't actually see what's on my terminal side but they're going to use this command to ping their server and then execute this now what this does is echo just prints out to the terminal and they you have this gibberish here so this is a base 64 encoded string which has probably some code inside you can decode this i think this is a execution and installation and setting up uh, xm rig to work on your on my machine so they install xm rig with this and they set it up to always restart and always mine and you can see from the command echo and then this base 64 characters they decode this string with this pipe operator in the base 64 binary and then they pipe it to bash which means it's going to execute now imagine if they want to do something more insidious and not just steal your money they maybe want to wipe everything from your linux server what's going to happen is they're going to execute this code and this code is maybe going to say uh, sudo remove whatever they wanted to and then they're going to pipe it to bash and execute it which means everything is gone if you don't have a backup, if you have a database on the same server, everything is going to be gone. And they tried to execute many of these malicious things, but the thing that stopped them was this. None of the commands that they wanted to execute were possible, and all, all of them said command not found, even if they had root access. And I'm going to get to this right now. They tried to execute kill all vget to actually install something, ufv to drop the firewall and be able to access any port the ip tables which is again a utility the curl again this is days and days of we get curl ufv ip tables kill all and so on and i stopped them because of very smart principles and this principle is called the least privilege principle so if you have the least privilege principle what this does i couldn't can't spell principle 
it, what this does is it gives least privileges to the container, which means we don't want to install anything on it. If we had cat or vget or UFV, we have a problem because they can execute this. And with the least privilege, privilege principle, they don't have anything. You have a distroless image. And with a distroless image, this essentially means that you only have the code running on your server. So even if they have root access, good, they can do whatever they want with the server, but they can't actually get anything out of it. You can't access anything. You can't install anything. You only have the ls commands maybe, and that's it. Now, why couldn't they see my env file? The env file was, uh, it was exposed. It's, it's there, the env file. Well, not actually, because there's a huge difference when running something in production. When you run something in production, what people usually do is they copy the env file into their server and then they just uh, run their app so for example i don't know node server.js and you have the node the env loading whatever happens by default and then they see the env and it works now this is the default thing that many people make a mistake you don't want to run anything like this you want to run your containers your services your workers whatever using the export command so you export and let's say my api key and then you specify the key here, and then you say node server.js. And what this does is it loads the env in the current session that's executing the server, the node server.js file, and any hacker that gets your file system and they get access to your file system, they can't actually do anything. Why? Because there is no .env file. They can't have your terminal session. They can only access your env file and everything else is if you actually add it to the server and use it to run these commands. You want to always do this. You want to use this pattern here. So the combination of having the least privileges, a distroless image, they can't actually do anything and install anything. And if they want to collect certain sensitive data, you have this command here to stop the attacker from copying your .env file. So even though they had everything they could want it, this is a dream for any attacker, they couldn't do anything to the app. It's it's fully protected because you can't access anything. It's it's like walking into an empty room. It's good you 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 walked into the empty room, but once you're in the room, there's nothing of value to you. So if you want to learn how to do this and how to protect yourself even when there's a 10 out of 10 vulnerability so that you can sleep at night without racking up bills and uh, and getting someone knocking at your door i'm gonna make a video soon on the entire process of how i'm doing this and how i'm protecting myself myself and hosting reliable production ready servers just keep track of the channel and i'll see you soon